So we have at Warner Media indeed closed the discovery process as far as the counting side of the house for reach frequency across platform against advanced audiences um, as far as looking under the hood and thinking about um, a set of criteria that we at Warner Media were keen on making sure that we could, if not solve for today, at least look at partners who are thinking critically and prioritizing on their product roadmap and across their investment portfolio, how they want to start measuring um, for reach frequency. When we initially started the process, it was thinking really about not just a broad demographic of persons 25 to 54 against linear, because we have a partner who does that well, but really how do we advance that conversation and start actionizing against a test and learn where we could think about not just the very top of non-optimized linear, but then start moving into a more advanced audience set, be it um, an auto intender or something more advanced besides the 25 to 54 year old. Um, and then also start thinking about uh, marrying our first party and third party data set, moving not just in the land of linear, um, but also then marrying it um, and combining it with, with digital. It's that holy grail, Andy, of the Venn diagram, at least in my nerdy dreams of having the only, only both uh, deduped appropriately in a way that we feel confident um, across screens. And then, you know, making sure that we're not just thinking about um, the different platforms and then the advanced audience sets, but also thinking about the, the viewing experience. So whether it's live or if it's done um, in a delayed fashion and getting a, I hate to say accounting report, but accounting report at the end of this, where we can successfully report on, on the deduplication across screens that we can provide for advertisers during our test and learn, but then ultimately think about um, how to transact um, in a matter of currency during the next upfront against you know, a pool of our inventory at Warner Media. This is no easy task, and I'm actually really proud of the good work that the team here at Warner Media has done in not only vetting and looking under the hood, but also the continued partnership that we've made with are the vendors, not just the ones that we have selected for the POC, but across the board, um, really refreshing to see how open these measurement partners have been, whether it was not only letting us talk to you know, the chief research officer, which you'd expect, but also having conversations with um, the head of investments or the, the CROs, again, making sure that whatever round of series of funding they're in, um, how are they thinking about placing those investments? And then ultimately the nitty gritty of of being able to say, you know, measurement and methodology is important. How are you commingling set top box and ACR? How are you thinking about the forecasting portion of, of the cycle from, you know, not only looking at inventory and what's available, but then optimizing um, throughout the campaign, real time assessment, and then the ability to report the, the counting um, metrics that we, we value. Um, Andy, in full transparency, as we all know, not there wasn't a single one of the partners who could do all the things, um, but that's okay. We understand where the gaps are. We believe that they're being really uh, smart about how they're gonna care for those said gaps. And ultimately, this is about testing and learning and actionizing so we can just be smarter as we head into the rest of 22. And I wanted to ask you about um, sort of understanding the value of storytelling, of context, of content, uh, which kind of goes beyond um, you know, eyeballs or completed views and sort of the, the challenges for you and sort of the, the value that Warner Media brings through its storytelling, through its content, which is, um, you know, how do you quantify that if you do, or how do you represent the value? Well, I think it starts first um, when we think about content and storytelling and sort of the value of said storytelling is we don't ever take for granted uh, the treasure trove and the beautiful storytelling that Warner, Warner Media brings out on a daily basis. It is, it's what allows us to have the conversations that we have and also gives us the responsibility to make sure that we're counting and measuring efficacy on, the, on behalf of our advertisers. But if there wasn't the power of storytelling and the, um, the fandom that exists and the relationship that exists between the story and the viewer, then we wouldn't be having this conversation. And um, I, I joke a lot, but it's it's a rare privilege to be able to, to sort of sit and have not just the beautiful storytelling that is um, streaming on HBO Max, and we've talked about this earlier, but whether it's the reboot of Sex and the City 
oh my gosh, I could just watch it for the clothes alone. Um, but then also the nostalgia or um, the sex lives of college girls, everything from um, having the matrix there. And then also, you know, the, the, the ability to look at succession and all the craziness that is that all the way through our traditional linear networks. Um, the fact that we bring live sports and news to viewers on a daily basis and they, and really we have a trusted relationship with the consumer um, is, is it's allows us again to have the conversation that we're having where I sit at Warner Media, along with my other partners across the research organization here, across entertainment and live news and sports, is that we do have a responsibility to make sure that we are indeed measuring it appropriately and sharing its value in a way that at least on the monetization or the ad side of the house that we're bringing to our advertisers who are putting their brands in such a well-lit environment, such a trusted experience. Um, HBO Max with ads has the you know, has the promise of a light ad load. Um, it is a beautiful and wonderful experience, but we also have the experience that is, I call it the OG or the way that God intended uh, TV to be watched, which is with a channel surf and sort of a lean back experience in our cable environment. But, you know, ultimately I think it's, it's the reason why we're able to have the scale that we have. We reach 78% of Americans, um, you know, in any given month. And that's just across our portfolio here domestically. Uh, we just announced that with HBO Max, we are uh, globally near 70 million um, active, active subscribers. And here in the US domestically, we're at about 45 million. And that happens because of the storytelling we put out into the ecosystem and the way in which our fans and consumers react to it and show up day in, day in and day out to consume that beautiful content. When you sort of look at what's ahead for this year uh, in terms of innovation in our industry, what, what's exciting to you and what do you hope we accomplish? Yeah, you know, I, I think foundationally, this is, this is going to probably sound like the boringest of boring answers, right? But we're in the business of moving a marketplace forward for, for better ways of demonstrating um, success and in, 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 in value. So, you know, we at Warner Media we started um, a process late in 21 um, to look at preferred partners as far as how do we start pushing the envelope on how we count differently. That's foundational to our business um, without question. It's the how many and the how often. The next um, really specific strategic uh, measure is that, that we're keen on uh, fleshing out more is on the effectiveness side of the house. And these two things, the counting and the effectiveness are inherently linked. And our ability to start hooking these things together um, across our media portfolio on behalf of our partners is going to be really, I think, exciting work. Um, and we talk a lot about higher value metrics, but everything from, you know, attention, engagement, how do we think about qualifying our audiences in different ways outside of just reaching, you know, a said person so many times for, you know, optimal frequency and, and that reach curve, but ultimately did it matter? And looking and saying, okay, how do we want to think about um, resonance. So, you know, you saw an ad, you liked an ad, you may consider said ad, but then actually taking an action and then demonstrating conversion. And yes, it's lofty. And yes, it's, it's like, we've been talking about it for so long, but I believe that this is truly the moment in time where we're not just going to talk, we are actionizing, we're going to change the business. And, you know, I get really excited about that. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to not only that, but I mean, I'm not going to lie. When you think about innovation and change, let's watch the metaverse. Why not, right? Let's see what's happening across TikTok and what turns viral. I know I do. And, you know, let's continue watching the good television that seems to be um, being poured out of our content pipes on a, on a daily basis. I think we're in a really, really lucky and fortunate time, even though, yes, sadly, we're not at CES right now, Andy, but um, maybe next year.